My name is Adam Lamble. I'm a, a pediatric oncologist at Seattle Children's Hospital, and I work fairly uh, closely with the Children's Oncology Group and specifically the Myeloid Diseases Committee. Um, so uh, pediatric AML uh, is a very heterogeneous disease. I think that um, we all agree that we could do better in um, uh, curing these patients. Um, and really the paradigm for pediatric AML is um, some patients can be cured with chemotherapy alone, whereas some patients need their treatment intensified to something called a uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. But currently, we don't always know which patients would benefit from a stem cell transplant and which patients can uh, be cured with um, chemotherapy alone. And so that is a large part of the work that I'm highlighting at this year's conference. TP53 is a very well-known mutation in all uh, human cancer. It's probably the most mutated gene in all types of human cancer. And in um, uh, adult patients with AML, it has been very well described as a high-risk mutation. And so, unfortunately, um, adult patients with this mutation do very poorly. Now, uh, in pediatrics, it is um, more rare, so it's not as prevalent. And so, there's really been a lot of mixed reporting about the prognostic significance of a TP53 mutation. And so um, what our group did in collaboration with Sohail Mazinchi's lab at the Fred Hodge Cancer Center and the Children's Oncology Group was we looked at the samples that are stored in the biorepository for um, um, previous uh, trials for um, pediatric uh, AML and at the newly diagnosed time point. And what we did was um, with kind of more sophisticated next generation sequencing and then also larger sample sizes, we were able to retrospectively go back and interrogate um, uh, almost 2000 samples for their TP53 status. And what we did was we correlated that mutational status with both disease characteristics and then also clinical outcomes. As um, uh, presented in the abstract, so what we were able to do was we were able to retrospectively look at um, 1,747 samples, and we found a TP53 mutation in um, 68 patients, or 3.9% of the samples. Now, importantly, there are some mutations and genes that we don't call that we don't consider pathogenic, and so either it's just a benign variant or it's a variant of unknown significance. So, of those um, 68. Uh, variants that we found, we went through and we looked at the location of um, the mutation and uh, looked at databases that had previously described different um, uh, TP53 mutations. So only 26 of those, or 1.5% of the total data set, actually had uh, what we would consider a pathogenic TP53 mutation. And so, uh, you know, that, that correlates with what has previously been described, that it's a very rare alteration in pediatrics. But nonetheless, 1.5% of patients, it's something that we um, potentially will all come across in our career and knowing how to um, address it is important. And so what we found is that um, patients that have these TP53 mutations were more likely to have a complex karyotype. And that's actually been really well described in adult patients with AML. So that wasn't too surprising to us. And so a complex karyotype is uh, one where there's at least three different um, structural changes um, to the karyotype. Um, and then uh, there weren't a lot of other associations as far as age or gender, ethnicity, or anything like that. We did see a paucity of co-occurring low-risk alterations in these patients, but they weren't more likely to have any type of other um, high-risk mutation compared to uh, the, the um, data set as a whole. And now, I think importantly, these patients were just as likely as patients without a TP53 mutation to achieve a remission. So they respond initially to chemotherapy just as well as uh, their counterparts, but unfortunately, they had a very, very high risk of relapse. And so um, the, the relapse risk for this cohort was 77%, which led to an event-free survival of 13%, which is just um, unacceptable and exceedingly poor in our patient population. And then I think that, you know, what else is, else is notable is unfortunately the overall survival was also dismal at 16%. And so, um, you know, just that a patient relapses doesn't mean that we're not able to salvage them with something like a stem cell transplant. But unfortunately, when these patients relapse, 
they're exceedingly difficult to salvage. And we only had one long-term survivor following a relapse event that was ultimately able to be salvaged. And so then when we compared these outcomes to uh, uh, the population as a whole, of course, they were inferior. But when we compared them to contemporarily defined high-risk patients, so other patients with um, high-risk alterations, these outcomes were even uh, more inferior than those patients. And so I think that when we take all of this information as a whole, albeit rare, we do think that TP53 mutation um, uh, should probably be considered a high-risk alteration in um, you know, upcoming um, de novo uh, trials for pediatric AML.